Hey everyone, and welcome to Top Think. Today, we're going to learn about five ways to look smarter than you actually are. Now, let's begin. You don't need to be intelligent to convince other people that you are. By adjusting how you move and speak, you can transform the way the world perceives you. You can sell them a confident, intelligent version of yourself. A version of you they can believe in. A version of you that knows exactly what you're talking about, even if you really don't. To control their perception, you don't always need definitive proof. Well, just think of it this way. You see a chair sitting in the middle of the room, and you want to know if it's a solid object. How would you figure this out? Well, you could touch it and get definitive proof, but most people never get that far. They may be convinced that the chair is solid just by looking. They see that it takes up space. They notice the grainy texture of the wood. Their brain uses all these little clues to tell them that something is what they think it is. We assess intelligence the same way. People look for and analyze clues that tell them whether or not you're smart, capable, or trustworthy. The actual content of your speech is just one of many ways you can influence how they perceive you. Now, just like you assume the chair was solid, other people will assume you're accomplished and proficient. If you give them enough clues, you can get anyone to believe you're smarter than you actually are. Number 1. The Power of Simplicity It's tempting to change the way people perceive you by showing off. Isn't that how you're supposed to prove yourself? Hmm? To convince them you're strong, you lift something heavy. To prove that you're funny, you make them laugh. But showing off your intelligence can have the opposite effect. When you're trying too hard to sound smart, people assume that you're not. It's sort of like a paradox. Smart sounds dumb. Hard sounds easy. Unless you really are an expert on the subject, people won't see big words and complex concepts as a marker of intelligence. All they'll see is arrogance, insecurity, and a hint of desperation. So put down the thesaurus and keep things simple. Whether you're writing an essay or giving a speech, simplify your ideas and language so that anyone could understand you. This is a part of intelligence that few people really pay attention to. Let's say, for example, that you had two science teachers. The first rambles on and on without really explaining anything. He uses so much scientific jargon that his students barely understand him. The second teacher, on the other hand, explains the same subjects in a way that students connect with and they learn from. Now, who would you say is more intelligent? We often recognize the smartest people for their ability to make something difficult sound easy. They don't just understand the concepts, they're creative and efficient communicators who want other people to share their knowledge. They keep things simple and meaningful while letting their intelligence speak for itself. Now, on a smaller scale, simpler language can increase the impact of everything you write or say. Simple sentences naturally communicate assertiveness and power. Their short and sweet structure oozes confidence. You sound direct without imposing any boundaries or qualifications. Your messages are bold and straightforward. They stick in people's heads. Wordy, meandering sentences lose their punch. People end up lost in your 10-cent words and clauses. Your attempts to sound smart will leave them irritated and confused. So you can change their perception and have a lasting impact by dumbing yourself down. Number 2. Expressive Speech Vocal expressions are another subtle clue we use to judge intelligence. Volume, speed, and pitch are the most diverse ways to adjust your speech. Each can heighten emotions, flip a sentence's meaning, and completely change the way people react. To start, volume often translates into enthusiasm or energy. Take this sentence, I like dogs. If someone were to shout it, I like dogs, you'd think they were extremely excited or borderline obsessive. You'd probably wonder if they like dogs a little too much. By contrast, whispering tells you they're scared or ashamed. I like dogs. Hmm. Ideally, you want to raise your voice just enough to show some energy, but not so much that people think you're crazy. The speed of your speech says a lot about your intent. When you go too fast, you show that you're nervous or impatient. They'll think you're rushing because you either aren't confident or aren't prepared. Taking your time gives your words weight. The clear spaces between each word make them sound calculated. You show how much you value your own message 
which convinces other people to do the same. Finally, pitch conveys certainty and authority. You can, for example, add believability by lowering the pitch of your voice at the end of a sentence. Normally, we raise our pitch to end a question or something that we're not sure about. It gives the other person a hint that we may need a little help. When you're trying to sound smart, you don't want the pitch of your voice undermining your message. Most people don't put too much thought into their vocal expressions. They're often products of habit. If you want to sell your most intelligent self, don't just pay attention to what you say. Focus on how you say it. Number 3. Visual Cues Not all cues related to intelligence are auditory. We rely on all of our senses to make assumptions about the people around us. Sights, sounds, tastes, smells, and feelings all contribute little pieces of information that you use to conceptualize the world. When judging intelligence, visual cues are especially important. You primarily use them to analyze emotion and meaning. Imagine someone's telling you a sad story. To understand the gravity of the situation, you aren't just listening. You're watching their body language to see what you're supposed to be feeling. You might notice watery eyes and a lowered gaze. They might drop their shoulders or put their hands on their face. This body language tells you to mirror their emotions. You react with sadness because you perceive sadness. But what if they smiled? Wouldn't that completely change how you react? Visual cues work the same way for intelligence. If you want to reinforce that you're a smart person, you need to align your body with your words. Open your chest, arms, and legs to show confidence. You might wave your hands while you speak to grab people's attention. In general, all kinds of motion make it easier to rope people in. Many speakers walk around the stage for the same reason. The activity keeps people's eyes busy while showing that they're confident enough to take up space. No matter what gesture you're doing, it's best to keep them small but firm. You want to communicate confidence without going overboard. This simple change will persuade people to believe in you, and you'll have an easier time believing in yourself. You'll unconsciously act more capable and self-assured when you put yourself in a powerful physical position. Number 4. Compound Names Your name is often the only thing people know about you. It's how you introduce yourself. It's how you leave your mark on a project. And like any of the cues on this list, it can change how they perceive you. Imagine you're publishing your first paper. Your name will be the first and only thing everyone reads about you. So the assumptions start right here. Your name becomes a two-word summary of everything you stand for. Yeah, I know it leaves a lot to be desired, but that's just the way people think. So how can your name leave a bigger impact on the people who read it? Well, a 2014 study tested this exact situation. Researchers asked participants to evaluate three academic papers. The first was written by an author with no middle initial. The second had one initial. And the third had two initials. Could this tiny change really affect people's evaluation of the entire paper? Absolutely! People rated the second paper significantly higher than the first, even though the middle initial was the only difference. And if that wasn't enough, the third paper scored even higher than the second. Adding that initial made each author seem more intelligent and credible than the last. Initials lead us to conceptualize the author differently. That one extra letter takes advantage of your preconceived notions. You're used to seeing middle initials in formal academic contexts. So when you see it anywhere else, you can't help but associate it with higher social status and credibility. After you make that assumption, it affects everything you do from there on. In the back of your mind, you'll spend the whole paper thinking the author is more intelligent than they actually are. Number 5. The Glasses Effect Sometimes seeming smart is as easy as putting on a pair of glasses. You might think I'm joking, but a 2018 study found that wearing glasses made people seem more intelligent. They had participants look at photos of different politicians and choose who they would vote for based solely on appearance. Turns out politicians with glasses got the most votes. They were rated more capable and trustworthy than their counterparts, all because of one little piece of clothing. So why do glasses make such a big difference? Well, like adding a middle initial, we've developed certain stereotypes around people who wear them. 
Over 60% of people in the U.S. wear glasses, yet we associate them with intelligence and introversion. You still see nerdy characters in movies wearing glasses. It becomes ingrained in our culture. Outside of the U.S., this stereotype doesn't really exist. Another study ran a similar test with a new set of politicians in India. Sure enough, the glasses didn't make a difference. So, if you're ever choosing between wearing glasses and contacts before an interview, go ahead and take advantage of this common misconception. It might give you the little boost you need to lock down the job. Thank you for watching Top Think, and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way.